Hey everybody, Jack Close Painting here with a new video. We're going to be painting brand new Space Marine Outrider bike in the colors of the Ravenwing. Start off, I've got him primed up black with some of our Steinol Res primer. Easiest way to start off painting black armor is just prime with black. Use that. First color we're going to use to give some subtle highlights to this guy is going to be some dark neutral gray. I'm just going to lightly airbrush that over the model at a high angle. It's going to be a fairly subtle color once it dries. In fact, almost all of the work that we're going to be doing to the black armor with the airbrush is going to end up being extremely subtle and a little flat because we're going to take this model in a different direction than what you're used to seeing me doing. I'm going to be pulling out a lot of scale modeling techniques rather than your very basic miniature painting techniques to give this guy a semi-realistic look. You can see that I did some lighter gray airbrushing on this guy. This is entirely optional. And just to show you guys a cool little trick. So let's say that when you're painting your guy, you get too much bright gray on your model. Well, you can just take some transparent black or thin out some black paint with a lot of flow improver to make it very transparent and lightly airbrush that over the model to tone that stuff down and it gets a much more subtle look whilst still having a little bit of pop to it. So he's looking pretty good. You can see that those grays are nice and clean, nice and subtle, not too bright, still reading as black armor. Next up is gonna to be to seal all that paint in with a gloss varnish, and that is to protect our paint because we are gonna be doing some decals. And You've probably heard it a lot of times that a really good way to do decals on your models is to put on a gloss varnish and then put your decals on and then varnish those in with a matte varnish so that it looks like paint on the model. Got my micro set and micro saw here. Going to be using these two compounds to do our decals. Now with these newer Games Workshop decals I have found in testing that they are slightly more fragile than previous iterations of them, which are a little bit more beefy, a little bit harder to uh, soften down with the solvent. Whereas these, if you touch them with a little bit of this microsol or similar uh, decal softener, they will immediately start to soften and kind of curl up. So what I do is I use our micro set to release the decal from the paper and when I can move it around with my brush I'm gonna paint a little bit of that onto the surface and then touch just a very small amount of our micro saw right to the decal and then immediately put it onto the model right and you can see it, it even there it started to kind of curl up on me so you got to be fast um, if you're worried about it you can also hold the paper closer to the model and then just kind of slide it right off of the paper onto the model that it helps that out too. But yeah, just be very, very uh, conservative with that micro saw. And then once you get it onto the model, just gently brush the micro set out from underneath. This is going to create a vacuum effect, which sucks the decal down onto the model. And because it is softened, that suction effect is going to do all of the stretching and conforming onto that domed surface of the shoulder pad for us. And I really only use the solvent when I have to do something like shoulder pad emblems that need to conform to curves on two different axes. Whereas if it was only a curve on one axis, that decal, which is a basically a 2D plane, can curve over another 2D plane with a single curve. But when you add in both curves over the X and Y axis or multiple axes, then you need it to conform so it doesn't crinkle up. So on flatter surfaces, like this small number that's more on the flat surface of the shoulder pad, I don't need to use that micro saw. Just the micro set works fine. Um, or if you don't want to use the micro set, you can just do it like regular water slide, um, as the name suggests, on the parts of the bike where I'm just putting the emblems on there on the big flat surfaces. Just some micro set works fine. And those look great. Got some nice decals on there. And the next thing we're gonna do 
uh, after varnishing the model and sealing those in is we're gonna do some sponge chipping. So I've got that same dark neutral gray that we used to highlight it with the airbrush. Got a little piece of pluck foam here that I've torn up and I've got my self-holding tweezers. This really helps uh, ease stress on your fingers. And I got big sausage fingers, so trying to hold that little piece of foam and get into all those hard to reach places is really strenuous and kind of hard. So I prefer to use tweezers. And then beyond that, if you have self-closing tweezers like I do, it makes it even easier since you're not straining your, your hands to hold on to that sponge the entire time. And yeah, I'm just going to get most of that paint off of the sponge, kind of dab it off on the side so that I leave little, little flecks and chips and spots uh, when I touch it to the model. And I'm just going to go around the model anywhere where I think wear and tear might have happened um, in the course of this guy, you know, tooling around on the battlefield with his dope new bike, and especially on the bottom, leading edges on the front of stuff like that. You can see there I was doing some little swishes to kind of pull the paint and create little scratches on the front leading edge. Once that's dry, I'm going to take a lighter gray. This is some bright neutral gray. Very, very light gray. This is going to be sort of our scratched paint kind of look to really make things pop. And I'm just going to do the same thing, but a little less so. You know, I'm going to go around with the sponge on some of the areas that uh, we already did. Just try not to overdo any of the secondary color because we want this to be less so. We want these to be smaller chips. It's going to help create that realistic look. Then the next step is going to be to do some hand painting. Now this is, again, this is kind of optional. Um, if you want your stuff to really complete the look and look the way it's supposed to, um, you can do this. This is something I generally reserve for uh, larger vehicle type models or character type models because it is a lot of extra work. So if I was doing a bunch of just like infantry line troop guys where I have to paint a whole bunch of them, then just those two steps is gonna look fine. So this third step where I'm kind of connecting the dots a little bit and doing a lot of what I started to call uh, paint chipping Morse code or edge highlighting Morse code where I just do lots of little dots and dashes with my brush to kind of connect those larger clusters of chips and kind of go along the hard edges of each of these panels. And you don't want to do like a clean edge highlight that doesn't particularly look right. So yeah, like the best way I can describe it is just do a lots of little dots and dashes. So edge highlighting Morse code. And you can see that I'm drawing little scratches and just kind of doing those dots and dashes along those edges and kind of connecting some of those bigger chips to create a larger cluster or a scratched line on the edge of a panel. So now that's looking pretty good, you can kind of leave it. Um, there is another optional step where you bring in a steel or silver metallic. So you can leave it here, or you can do some metallic on top of that to create some shine on the bare metal. Again, that's optional. Uh, but now I'm gonna block in the other metallic. So I've got some of our Pro Acryl bronze here. I really love this color. It's a nice dark meaty bronze. Looks great for Space Marines and the grim dark 41st millennium. And I'm just going to cut in everything that I want to be kind of a gold bronze color. 
you can go a shiny yellow gold if you want. It's just for um, a darker color palette like the Ravenwing. I prefer a darker, uh, more subdued bronze type gold. So that's why I'm going with this. I just think it, it looks a little bit more grimdark. And after that, I'm going to cut in all of our steel pieces. There's lots of different parts that you can choose to paint in with a steel metallic on the bike. Um, I'm going to do like the gun barrels, uh, his chainsword blade, little teeth, I guess is what they are, um, the exhaust, stuff like that. So anything that you feel would be an unpainted piece of steel metal on the bike, and you can do that. I found that that little section in between the chassis and the front forks those two little bar type things those actually look pretty good when you paint them with steel color because it gives a bit of color separation between the the front assembly with that front wheel and the rest of the chassis which can end up looking nice but you don't have to just you know season to taste whatever you want After that, I'm gonna paint in the iconic red bolter casings and chain sword that the Dark Angels really, really like. Even modern iterations of the Ravenwing have their bolter casings painted red. So I got some burnt red here and I'm just gonna paint that stuff in. And for the bolter casings, I'm taking extra care not to paint into the like panel lines, the recessed detail panel lines of the bolters. It gives an overall uh, cleaner look and it helps the wash do a more contrasty type job. Um, it, makes it, it makes it pop more. It helps those panel lines look like separate pieces rather than one big piece that has a detail depressed into it, if that makes sense. So, you know, do, do what you want to do, but on this project, that's, that's what I did. That's why it has that very clean, hard line for those panels. And then I gotta chip this paint just like the rest of the model. So I'm gonna take some bold pyro red or just a lighter red color of choice and mix it down with a little gray to kind of desaturate it. Now we don't want it to be pink. We just wanna take that lighter red and kind of tweak the desaturation dial on it just a little bit. So if you have um, like three parts red, then I would do one part or less of that gray and see what you get. And if you want to add more, you can. Um, or if it's too much, you can add more red to it. And again, I'm just going to go in and hand paint all these because I don't want to get red chippies all over our black armor or the barrels of the gun and have to repaint that, especially the black armor. I definitely don't want to try to redo all of that chipping. Um, so yeah, more edge highlight Morse code, super easy. And then what I'm going to do is take a dark gray, which is going to kind of mimic a matte metallic surface that uh, has the paint scratched off. And I'm just going to do the secondary paint chipping. Again, just kind of drawing little dots and dashes along the edges and um, underneath those uh, larger scratches and kind of go inside of the larger chip clusters to kind of show where the paint has chipped off down to a bare uh, primer or a bare metal. And again, optional, you can do some bare metallic, you can do some of that same steel metallic or a silver to show like a fresh chip or a fresh scratch. But on that part, I chose not to. I'm going for a more subdued look. And then I'm gonna start blocking in the other components of the model, starting with the leather pouches and holster. Got some dark umber i'm just gonna do a very simple clean base coat on that holster and any other type of bags or uh, pouches things like that i know that some people who have been doing raven wing for a really long time probably have those upgrade kits still where it has a lot of little like saddle bags and stowage and stuff and i would just use the same color for that too
I'm going to take a second to block in the purity seal there. Um, I don't have to, but it'll just give me a better idea of where I need to stop and start my highlights for shadows and stuff when painting this holster. So um, you can do this after you highlight your leathers or before, it's up to you. Um, I just used some of that same light neutral gray uh, while that paint was still kind of wet to kind of half-ass wet blend it to be a little bit more of a warmer color. Just block that right in there. I'm going to highlight all that leather with some light umber. I'm going to thin this down to a semi-glaze and just very gently highlight up on all of the leather pieces. And I'm not worried too much about creating a really smooth transition. I'm more focused on just doing correct highlights where the light would kind of supposed to be, if that makes sense. And if it's a little patchy, I'm okay with that too because it's just gonna help that leather have some worn textures in the end run. So I wouldn't worry too much about having like perfect pristine glazed color transitions on the leathers because once you get into um, creating textures and stuff like that for certain materials, it actually helps if it's not super uniform, if that makes sense. So I just wanna have some correct lighting highlights and if it's a little patchy, that's okay pretty quick on all that stuff. I'm going to paint in the tires using that same mixture of dark blue, green, dark gray, and a little black to create this uh, kind of greenish, bluish tire color. I had a little bit more green in this mix than I initially anticipated, but that's fine. I'm going to show you guys how to course correct if that happens to you because, you know, this is a color mix. And that means there is going to be some human error, so don't don't fret, it's fine. If it's too blue or too green any one way, we can fix it. Or you can do what I do and just, it's space rubber. Just say that. Any, any color is acceptable in 40k because space. Space metal, future, future metal, space rubber, whatever. Same thing with Age of Sigmar. Any color choice is acceptable because magic. You know, do whatever you want. Just say, oh, it's magic stuff. But we're gonna fix that. We're gonna gray it back down a little bit with some of that dark neutral gray. I'm gonna airbrush that lightly onto that tire, making sure to watch out for getting any on our armor chips and stuff like that. And once that gray has kind of been airbrushed on there, it's already starting to get that sort of like faded sun bleached rubber color that you can kind of see on like your car tires where they have like some road dust or like some sun bleaching on there. So that's fine. It's looking pretty good. And then once we get a wash on there, it's going to darken it down and it's going to look perfect. Trust me. Speaking of washes, we're going to get right into that. And I'm just going to put a little bit of our Mr. Weathering Color solvent, kind of just paint that onto the model to lube the surface up. And then I'm going to come in hard with the multi black, put that all over the model doing our general two-step process of apply and then blend and remove excess. I have a bunch of videos, so if this is the first time you're seeing this, um, we just want to apply that multi-black, put it all over kind of aggressively, and then use our brush and secondary tools like Q-tips or a piece of folded up paper towel to kind of blend out and remove some of that wash from the big flat surfaces and let it stay in the recesses and kind of blend it out and get that oil wash type look, that oil paint type look that this product uh, mimics. And if you want to see more in-depth on this technique, I have a video just for that on the channel. But yeah, it's not going to do a whole heck of a lot on our black armor, but it will make our paint chips pop a little more and kind of help it look uh, more realistic and you can see on our tires there once that black wash goes on the tire and we kind of blend it a little bit it does look like a nice black rubber tire um, in the other videos where I talk about mixing that paint color up I do mention that there is a company that makes a pre-mixed version of this paint it's called tire black and secret weapon miniatures sells that paint so if you don't want to worry about mixing the paint yourself you can get that um, I don't have any so I just mix the paints myself and I just want to make sure that there's no coffee stains or big droplets forming anywhere on the model. Just want to blend that out. Um, typically what I end up doing is just 
uh, cleaning my brush off on a piece of paper towel so it's kind of damp and then wicking away and blending out any excess and then repeating that process so just like wick it out on a piece of paper towel go do your thing on the model touch it to the paper towel rinse and repeat And that's gonna dry. So while that's drying, I'm gonna move him out of the, the danger zone on the, the desk here, because we're gonna do some more airbrushing and work on his base. And I wanna tell a story with this base, and I wanna do some, some work with these Vallejo pigments. I've got that burnt sienna and a yellow ochre, and I think those two will contrast nicely with our black armor. So we're gonna do kind of like a orangey red ochre uh, rad waste type Base, almost like a Mars. You could, it could double as a Mars base. So I've got some burnt sienna, some burnt orange, and some yellow ochre, and we're going to be using those to airbrush the dirt textures on our base. This is just some simple, you know, sand, basing sand glued to the base, super easy. Primed it black, and then I'm going to start off by airbrushing some of that burnt sienna, just very lightly building it up. I'm not going to do a solid base coat, just little light coats so that I have some of that darker black primer showing through in the deepest little nooks and crannies of all of that sand texture. Mainly focusing building up the opacity around the rim of the base so there's some darker values underneath the bike kind of mimicking a shadow. Then I'm going to come in with that burnt orange and I'm not really going to do anything too uniform. You can see that I've got some little like splotches and some like lines that are kind of undulating across the ground. I'm not really focusing on one area and I don't particularly go into this with a plan. But the reason I do this is because when you go outside and you look at a landscape or you see pictures for reference of a landscape of a bunch of like dirt or a desert or something like this, the color striations in that ground are not uniform. They kind of mix and twist and swirl and undulate and do all those types of cool words. Um, and it's random. So we want randomness, which is what we're doing. So that's why I have that uh, burnt orange that just kind of has like some weird splotches and randomness because it looks more like real ground. All right, this is a cool little technique. I'm gonna show you how I paint all the lenses on my Space Marines. Um, I don't do lens effects on Space Marines. Ain't nobody got time for that. And in my head cannon, I like their eye lenses to actually be backlit and glowy. So I take a little teeny tiny detail brush and some white or a really light gray, and I'm just gonna draw a little hash mark in the middle of their lenses. And I do one side, right side up and then I turn him upside down because pulling the brush is easier than uh, or pulling the brush towards yourself is easier than pulling the brush away from yourself to to paint things so that's why on the second lens I just turned him upside down so I can do the same thing pulling towards myself with the brush for more control and once that's dry I'm gonna take some fluorescent paint so this is fluorescent red from Vallejo and it's already pre-mixed because I have the model air version. So if you have like the model color version of the paint, you're gonna wanna thin it down with some flow improver or some water. And I'm just gonna take that paint and let it drop into that recess detail. And it's going to create a color filter over the white and gather in the little detail, the depressed detail around the um the eye lens the eye socket sort of sort of detail and i'm just going to put a little bit in there and let it completely dry and see how it looks and if i need more i'll do it again and if i don't then it's fine but you can already see there how it looks like a glow effect you know that fluorescent paint over that white is going to be very vibrant and then it's going to gather around the eye socket area almost looking like backlit so it's going to be pretty cool Gonna let that fully set up and then do some quick dry brushing on our base. Just kind of switch him back and forth to maintain effectiveness and time efficiency. Just taking that yellow ochre and dry brushing lightly onto our base to pick out all those little rocks and pebbles and sand textures.
And then I noticed he's got this uh, kind of like view screen, maybe uh, like a heads up display, computer monitor type looking thing. I don't know. But uh, I'm just going to base coat that out with some black green, super, super dark green, whatever you got. I like the idea that uh, the Imperium has all this dope technology, but some of it is still super outdated. So like I, I prefer to paint view screens and stuff like that as like really old computer monitors that are still only in that black and green type color scheme. And then I'm just going to glaze some regular green into the uh, opposite corners. So in this case, bottom left, top right, do what you want to do. And that's it. From a distance, that looks like one of those old computer monitors. Looks dope. You can do more, but I don't feel like you need to on something that small. And then I'm going to go ahead and put them on the base because we are about to use these pigments and the dry pigments can have some really cool effects, especially if you want to show uh, some dustiness. So what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit with my soft brush here. Having a soft brush is very important. So I would recommend uh, finding one of those in your hobby section or if you want to do it on the cheap, just go to Walmart or whatever your local big store is and buy a cheap makeup brush you know those are generally round tipped and very soft and they're pretty cheap most times because you're gonna just mess them up we don't care about high quality makeup brushes we just need something to do the job and I'm just gonna grab little bits at a time and dust that onto the model and kind of rub it onto the surface get that dry pigment rubbed into some of the details and onto the flat surfaces especially around the tires and like the bottom of the of the bike and around his like feet and stuff like that um, and right now this looks a, like a lot this is a lot of dry pigment but don't worry because what happens with this dry pigment is when it is not really clumped up and concentrated like it is on our base when we varnish over that it is going to make some of that dry pigment disappear. It's gonna fade out and you're not gonna see it anymore. It's gonna dissolve it and you won't see it. So trust me on this. You wanna go a little bit harder than you initially want because when you varnish over it, which is a requirement to keep it on the model or else it'll just rub off every time you touch it, um, that varnish will make a lot of that dry pigment disappear. So you wanna go a little bit harder. Now, this guy looks fine as is if you, want, if you want him to be really, really dusty. But like I said, when you just touch this with your fingers, you're just going to rub it right off the model unless you seal it in with the varnish. So that is a requirement if you want to do this and you're doing something you want to play with rather than just like a diorama piece. Okay, so got everything good to go, painted the rim of that base black, and now we're gonna seal everything in with a nice matte varnish. Again, I'm using the Lucky Varnish line from Ammo by MIG. Um, I only needed the gloss and the ultra matte for this project. So I like to finish everything out with a nice ultra matte. Um, you can use satin if you prefer that. Or hell, just leave it as gloss. If you only put a gloss varnish on there, if you want your dude shiny, you know, I'm not going to judge you. But my personal taste is I want matte varnish. And as you see, as I spray that varnish on there, a lot of that dry pigment that we dusted on there kind of disappears. And it looks a lot more realistic. Rather than he's just caked up in dust, it has more of that slight uh, dusty patina from it kicking up as he's, you know, motoring down this rad waste. And that's it, that's, that's a done model. It looks super cool. It's a little bit more subtle than what you're used to seeing me do, but I did want to go slightly more realistic path on this one rather than the comic book hyper real path. And we got even more Indominus stuff. We got a bunch of new projects on the way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time.